Ladies and gentlemen, today is the day the official rulebook is explained for rival squads. If you guys are after some cheap, safe, and reliable coins, then make sure to go check out my sponsor, FIFACoin.com. They're by far the best and most reliable on the market, and they have loads of special promos going on throughout the entire year to keep your clubs filled full of coins for the best players, and if you use my code CURBS to get yourself a discount at checkout. So what's up, boys? I hope you like are all doing great, and welcome to something a little bit more chilled out today. I think it's going to be a case of me just doing a lot of waffling to you lot, explaining a bit of the rules because there is a lot of new viewers that have come over to my channel so first of all thank you and second of all i think there's there's a few people in the comment section that still don't fully understand how rival squads works so today is going to give me a great chance to explain everything make sure everybody's up to date with it and i think when i've completed this video as well in every description there's going to be like a rule sheet for rival squads that everybody can follow if they are unsure of it or they can literally just come back to this video so of course rival squads ladies and gentlemen is my very own series which is based around building a squad around a marquee player player and you have to build a minimum of a three league hybrid that also includes that player's rival teams and also someone he's played with at either club level or one of his previous clubs. So let's dive into it. Let's give you a perfect example of how rival squads would work. So let's have an example of Paul Pogba. So Paul Pogba currently plays for Manchester United. So if Paul Pogba was our marquee player, this is how the episode would work. So we would need to build a team that's a three league hybrid. So minimum of two from each league, including obviously Paul Pogba as well and he's on full chemistry and we would need to find two rival base players and someone that Paul has played with at one of his previous clubs or someone he has played with at club level. So in this case, just in, as an example, Manchester United is obviously the player that Paul Pogba plays for. So in a nutshell, we would either need two players from Manchester City, two players from Liverpool, one from Manchester City, one from Liverpool. So for an example, we'll just use Rodri and on this other occasion, we'll put Nathan Ake. So that means that one part of the squad building requirement is done. Nathan Ake and Rodri both play for Manchester City. So there's the two rival base players done for this certain team. And on this specific episode, Paul Pogba only has one previous club, which is Juventus. So in this episode, it may have worked to, to use someone from Juve. So for that stipulation to count, we can use Paolo Dybala. He currently plays at Juve and of course he is an ex-teammate of Paul Pogba. However, something else that could also work as well, let's go for the example, a nice easy one because it's one that's probably fresh in people's minds too, uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Now, this would also count as well for that stipulation because he is an ex-teammate of Paul Pogba. Maybe in the future we might change that rule to have someone from his previous club and an ex-teammate, but that might get a little bit confusing. So that's why it's an either or. So for people that don't understand it, you can have someone who is either at Juve currently or you can have someone who has played with Pogba at club level. So either of those two would work for that stipulation as well. And I feel like that's the one where people get a little bit confused. So hopefully you guys understand that one. But some of you also ask on different types of episodes as well. So say if our marquee player is someone like Lionel Messi, of course, their rivals are just naturally going to be Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid. However, when it comes to an episode where that player has only played for Barcelona, that rule then changes. So it means that the one club man rule comes to effect, which basically means you either need someone that is currently playing with Lionel Messi at Barcelona, or it requires a player that Messi has played with at club level at Barcelona. So let's just say an example again, one that I used not long ago in a, uh, in a rival squads. Let's just go for a Spanish icon in this instance, and let's go with Xavi. Although he is an icon, he has played with Messi at club level, so he would count as an ex-teammate of Lionel Messi. And it's all about being clever and trying to make the best team that you can sort of think of at the time. Of course, when it comes down to writing players and all that good stuff, it allows people to go and do a little bit of research, find out who they've played with at club level, a few transfers in the last few windows and that sort of stuff. It gives us a little bit of time when we have a break off camera to find out the most interesting way of building that team. Without your opponent guessing it, of course, as well, because that is also quite difficult. So I hope that's cleared up a little bit Bit of the actual squad building aspect because I'm pretty sure you guys, I mean, you guys watch seven minute squad, squad but the showdown, T tape down, and all that good stuff. You guys know that a three league hybrid with a minimum of two from each is pretty self explanatory. Two rival base players that bounces off the marquee player is pretty self explanatory. But for those who are a little bit confused on the ex teammate slash previous club side of things or the one club man rule, then hopefully that is explained for you. So now that you guys know the very basics of how a rival squads episode should work, once we have our marquee player, there is two ways of that we get the second player. We either go to the transfer market or if myself and say if I'm recording with Jack54 at the time, and if we're both wanting to open packs, then we'll do that to get our secondary player. There is no requirement on the series for what league or 
you can have or what you cannot have. It can literally be anyone. So we'll go with the Paul Pogba example yet again. Say if we're opening a Premier League Team of the Season pack and it gives us Marcus Rashford, then we can use him like another series that you can't. Or let's just give another example. Let's say we got Team of the Season Kevin De Bruyne out of that pack to go alongside the Paul Pogba. That would also mean that one of your rival base players are also done as well. So sometimes with a secondary player, you can get quite lucky. Or it could be something where you're forced to then be in the same league and then you have to then find out the way to branch out into two different leagues to meet the requirements. Which I thought was a clever way of trying to make things a little bit more difficult and you're not already forced into a second league in every single episode. Of course, I'm always looking for improvements for the series as well. I know like every episode we have like between five and 15,000 viewers that sort of watch every single episode of Rival Squads. So thank you for that, first of all. But I'm always open to constructive criticism to make the series better as well. So if you ever have any ideas for me that make that I could possibly implement into the series, so let that be known down in the comments section. So you guys basically know now how the series will work in terms of what the squad needs to be built and what happens with the marquee player and the second player. It's now time to get into the punishments and potential rewards for building the squad. So, dependent how many minutes that myself and my opponent gets, as long as we complete all three requirements within the, between the three, six minute time period, obviously that changes every single episode, depending on how lucky that you get in packs. For each requirement missed, that would count as a goal down. So, let's just say I've built my squad it has a three league hybrid with a minimum of two from each. I've got my rival players, but I've forgotten my ex teammate slash previous club. That would mean that I've completed two of the stipulations. And for that one that I've missed, it means that I would start a goal down. And vice versa, if I miss two of them and I only get the three leagues with a minimum of two, that would mean I would start two goals down. So you guys obviously get the gist of that. And let's just say a player is off chemistry in the team as well. So say, let's just say a left back is off chemistry. That player would then be changed for a bronze player. And what I also like to do on the series as well if there is only one player that has either been guessed or that is off chemistry in the team, that player can be a trump card in a sense where you can give someone any player on the game. And like other series, if the marquee player or the secondary player is off chemistry, obviously they can't be removed from the team. If that happens, it means you jumble up your team, leave your marquee player and your secondary player where they are, and then my opponent will get a shot at taking one of my players out of my team. Again, that is kind of like other series too, so you kind of get the gist of that. But like I said, I, I think we've sort of gone over the basics of how rival squads works. I think there probably may be a few questions that I might be able to answer for people down in the comment section. I will be active on the comments, answer as many questions as physically possible regarding the rules of rival squads. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed, so please make sure to leave a like, right? Subscribe if you're new. If you did have any questions about rival squads today, We've answered everything that we sort of needed to do. And if you have any more questions, the comment section's always there, or you can tweet me. And since the start of Rival Squads, it has... We, we, I've had the series for, like, almost a year and a half now, and the support has genuinely been absolutely mind-blowing in the time that I've uploaded Rival Squads. So, again, thank you all for the crazy support for that. Hopefully, we can continue to grow and make the series as best as we possibly can. And I can't do that without your guys' help. So, again, thanks for that. So, yeah, like I said, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new. And until the next episode of Rival Squads, which will be with the Festival of Foot promo, we'll catch you guys later.